Let's open our feet to pray. Just talk to God this morning. Say, Father, the time has come for me to hear from you. Lord, speak to me in the mighty name of Jesus. Just talk to God. Say, Father, I've come to meet with you in this place. As a word is coming forth, Father, speak with me. Let your word meet with faith in me. And let the world profit me in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Lord, you have said you have not called the house of Jacob to seek you in vain. Now it is time to receive from you. Father, speak to me. Meet me at every point of my need. Let me not go back remaining the same. Touch my life. Let your word transform my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, because you've answered this prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Everlasting Father, we are grateful unto you for giving us the grace to come together again to worship you. Let your name alone be exalted, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. The hour has come for us to hear from you. We don't want to hear man. We want to hear from you. Father, we pray you speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. As your word will come forth, I pray your word will meet with faith in us. And our word will transform our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you've answered this prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We thank God for the grace that we have again to share the word of God with us. And today the title of the message is Receiving the Promise. Receiving the Promise. One thing is for a promise to be made. Another one is one to receive the fulfillment of the promise. So when I'm talking about receiving the promise, I'm talking about receiving the fulfillment of the promise. And we bless the Lord for this month's team. And he said, the Lord God of Israel, grant my petition. The Lord God of Israel, grant my petitions. So there are things that we need to take, pay attention to there. The Lord God of Israel, he will grant something. And what will he grant? He will grant my petitions. So that is how we should move forward this, this month. To remember the Lord God that we serve is the God of the universe and they will grant our petition. And if we say that God will grant our petition, what about if we have made no petition or we have no petition? Then what will God grant? So it means this month we are called to make our petitions unto God so that he can grant them. God answer prayers, he answer petitions. Somebody said God answer prayer, but it does not answer murmur. God does not answer to complain. But when we make petitions and requests unto him, the Bible says he will grant my petition. Petitions are direct, they are specific. They are not complain. Many a time when children of God go before God, we only go to complain and murmur. I say, God, don't you see A? Why is A making it? I'm not making it. That's not a petition. A petition is going clearly and tell God what you want and make it clear that you need this. And when you do that, the Bible says, the Lord will grant our petitions. So petitions are specific. They are direct. And you know our team is taken from the book of 1 Samuel. It is the story of, of, of Anna. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17, he said, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17, he said, then Eli answered and said, go in peace. The God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. The story of Anna is clear to each and every one of us. Anna was a barren woman. Anna had no child. And every year, Anna was going to Shiloh. He was, she was coming back the way she went. Why? Because the devil stationed the second wife by her. The, the, the Penina will provoke Anna to, to anger every time. So that by the time Anna will get to Shiloh, instead of Anna to petition heaven, Anna will be wallowing in sorrow and crying and weeping. But one year, Anna made up her mind and said, never again. I'm not going to allow Penina to provoke me. I want to go to Shiloh and make petitions to God. I am not going to weep and be sorrowful, but I'm going to make my request known to the Almighty God. And that was a determination that Anna made. 
And now there was a promise of God that was missing in the life of Anna. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 23 verse 26, Exodus 23, 26, there was a promise of God for every daughters of Zion, for every descendant of Abraham. He said there shall be nothing cast their young, nor barren in thy land. That was a promise of God concerning Anna. Concerning every, every daughters of God, there shall be none barren. So that's a promise of God. But this promise was not fulfilled at this point in time in the life of Anna. Anna, remember God has made a promise that shall be no woman barren in the land. I am a woman, there is no reason why I must be barren in the land. And he knew who to approach. He, she knew where to go. All she needed to do was to go to Shiloh and make a petition to God. But year and year she was going to Shiloh, nothing happened. Because she, she, was, she was distracted by the enemy. By the time Anna was ready to go to Shiloh, Penina would provoke her. So by the time she would get to Shino, Anna would only be crying and weeping and focusing on Penina. But this year she said no, that enough is enough. I am going to face my creator. I'm going to receive the promise. I'm going to take my child from the almighty God. And that was what Anna did in Shiloh that year. We ask ourselves, why was Anna barren? The Bible didn't tell us why Anna was barren. But there could be so many things that could be responsible. One thing that came to my mind, maybe because Anna was going to give birth to a special child. And so the time for that special child to come has not arrived. And so until that promise is received and that special child is born, other children will not come. So rather than Anna to just stay, she kept on petitioning heaven. And she went into Toshilo that year. And the Bible, she paid vigorously, without any distraction. While others were dining and whining, Anna was praying. She was praying so vigorously that even the prophet of God, Eli, thought she was drunk. And she said, no, I am not drunk. Out of the abundance of the grief, I'm pointing to God, who can answer my prayer. And Anna, Eli made that statement, that Lord grant your petitions, that you have asked of him today. So it could be because Anna was ordained to bring forth Samuel. Maybe that, that was the reason why there was a delay. But the Almighty God knows the end from the beginning. He knows the promise that he has made concerning you and I. And when you look at the book of Habakkuk that was read this morning during the first service, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2, he said that the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it play upon the tablet. That promise of God that you are standing upon, that you have been praying about, that you are expecting their fulfillment. The Bible says, write it down. You know when you write it down, you see, this is mine. This is my portion. The Lord said there shall be no woman barren in the land. I write it down. I cannot be barren. And so make it plain on the tablet that he may run who read it. For the vision is for yet an appointed time. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. But at the end, it will speak, and it will not die. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, and will not tarry. I don't know what promise of God you are standing on. You are waiting on God. Maybe you have waited for one year, for two years, for three years. The Bible said the vision will come to pass. It is for an important time. Wait for it. Even though it tarry, it will surely come to pass. That is what we should run with when we are waiting upon the promise of God. The key word is wait for it. Waiting for it means traveling and prevailing in the place of prayer. Anna, 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 Anna prevailed. You know, she traveled in the place of prayer and she prevailed. When we are waiting, it's not the time to fold hand. It is the time to rise up in the place of prayer and say, my own family must come. My own destiny must be fulfilled. That is what it means to wait. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, Hebrews 6, 14 to 15, said, I will surely bless you and multiply your descendants 
And so Abraham, after waiting patiently, obtained the promise. The Bible says Abraham, after waiting, many never wait to receive the fulfillment of the promise. They run ahead, ahead of God and they, and, they, and they never get the promise. But Abraham waited on God patiently and obtained the promise. When you look at Hebrews 6, 12, no, Hebrew, let's look at Hebrews 10, 10, 10, 36. Hebrews 10, 36 says, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye may receive the promise. You need patience. When God makes a promise, you must do the will of God. And then wait patiently. He says you will receive that promise. And that's why the title of the message this morning is receiving the promise. Waiting patiently, doing the will of God, and then you will receive the promise. So, in case of Anna, we never knew. But we knew that she gave birth to a special child. Anything could delay, could delay promise. Enemy could do it. It could be the work of the enemy. Like the story of the good seed. I need some water there. Good seed. The Bible said the man that planted the seed, the seed was good. But when the man slept, the enemy came. The Bible said, and planted tears into the wheat farm. In the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 27 to 29. And when they wake up in the morning, they did not only see the wheat, but they saw the tears. And the servant called the master and said, but we planted only wheat. How come we see tears here? And the man said, the enemy has done it. I said unto them, an enemy had done this. It, it, that was the work of the enemy. A delay might be caused by the work of the enemy. You remember the story of Daniel. Daniel was fasting and praying. Immediately his petition went to heaven. The Lord said, answer to the prayers of Daniel. But the prince of Persia stood on the way and did not allow Daniel to receive answer to his petitions. But Daniel kept on praying. And then God said, I am still hearing the cry of Daniel. The, um, the voice of Daniel is still coming to me, but I've sent answer to his petitions. And they said, hey, the prince of Persia was standing on the way. And the Lord sent an archangel to go and rebuke the enemy. So, enemy could stand on the way of the fulfillment of promise. Also, sin could stand on the way of fulfillment of promise for a child of God. In John chapter 9, verse 2 to 3. When we remember John chapter 9, verse 2 to 3. And his disciple asked him, Saint Master, who did say that this man or his parent that he was born blind? It means it is possible for sin to cause it, that the man was born blind. But in this particular case, Jesus said, no, let's go. Jesus answered, neither had this man sin nor his parent, but that the work of God should remain manifest in him. Maybe that delay is to bring a greater glory of God in your life. So that when men hear your testimony, then they will know that the God that you serve is the Almighty God. Amen, somebody. So sometimes it might be God wants to bring something out of it. The Lord wants to get, take a greater glory. And so that is why when we are waiting on the promise, we need to be patient. We need not to challenge God. We need only to continue to make our petition clear to him. But in some cases, it could be the result of sin. Sin can cause a delay in the promise of God in the life of a child of God. In John chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. John 5, 13 to 14. Like now I said, in case of Anna, it could be because he, the, God was going to give her a special child. And there's a time for the special child to come. And I said for others, it could be because God wants to, want to take a big glory in your life. That is why a delay is not denier. It met some, somebody. And I said it, it could be sin. Now look at the, this case here. John chapter 5 verse 13 to 14. And he that was ill 
which give me New King James Version. New King James. He that was healed, which not who it was for Jesus had conveyed himself away. Imagine in that place. Let's look at verse 14. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. See no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. That man was sick for, for 28 years. Always by the pool of Bethsaida. People were receiving their healing, but she ne he never got his own. For 28 years, he was waiting there. I don't know why he couldn't get his own miracle. He said, before I get up, somebody is there. Something was wrong. And Jesus told him, go and see no more. Let's watch him come upon you. I'm going to request, I will, have a, I will request our technical to ask the church, what is Pastor Dewale's church? The house of uh, glory. To go and request for the tape of the preaching of our pastor in that church that Sunday. I recommend everyone who want to make it to heaven, everyone who don't want to experience delay promise, to go and listen to that tape, and let the spirit of God minister to you, because many of many of many a time we are the one delaying the promise of God in our life. That 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 unforgiveness, that malice, that quarrel, those things that God has been asking you to deal with all this year, and you say that is the way I am born. Those are the things that are standing on the way of the promise of God. We cannot claim the promise of God because we are not, we are not walking in his will. I just mentioned things that can delay. Can cause a delay in promise. It could be you are waiting for the promise for the appointed time. It could be that God wants to take greater glory in your life. It could, it could be the entrance that is coming from the enemy. It could also be sin. But Adam knew the promise of God. Anna was determined to receive his promise last, last year. Even though the enemy stationed Penina. Maybe Anna was full of malice and bitterness against Penina. By the time you got to Shiloh, the malice was in, in her heart. And so that was standing in the way. That year she said to it, Penina, you cannot stop me. I am going to face God. It is not between me and you. I have no dealing with you. I have dealing with the Almighty God. I let it go. I forgive you. But I am going to face the Almighty God. And I am going to get my miracle. That is what Anna did last year. It, 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 it gave me sorrow to see people of God, children of God, sitting in the same church and bearing grudges and malice against each other. And they are coming, they are sitting down and they are listening to the word of God. I pray that Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Technical, please, if you can get that tape, I encourage everyone. The man of God say, what come out of you? Where people sm smash on you is what is inside of you. What is inside of me? Is it anger? Is it bitterness? Is it unforgiveness? That will not allow us to receive the promise. Anna forgot about her penina face God. He went to business in Shiloh. And the devil still was running after Anna. Eli came. Eli, instead of Eli to encourage her, he said, You are drunk. Ah, I'm sure many of us, if we are, if we are in that shoe, by the time we, we will talk to Eli, Eli will not be able to eat for the rest of the day. <laughs> but Anna said, no, 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 um, uh, that will get behind me. Anger, I've said to you before coming to Shiloh, I'm not going to be, I refuse to be offended. I ref Pastor Kumi told us, offense will always come. Whether I am better or bitter, I make the difference. When you see better and bitter, I e make the difference. Whether I'm going to be better for it, I make the difference. Whether I'm going to be bitter, it is my choice. And I refuse to allow bitterness to crop in. And, 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 and insulting the man of God, she explained. When the enemy knows you are close to receiving the promise, he's going to station himself beside you to provoke you to anger. He will make that sister to speak evil of you. Instead of you to let go, you begin to, to react. And before you know what's happening, the promise is, is again has passed. That will not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. How will Anna have received Samuel? If he had not tarried in the place of prayer. If he had not traveled in Shiloh and prevailed. That is how Anna received the miracle. And I said that Lord Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Jesus told his disciples, you must pray without ceasing. Told the story of that judge. Brethren, 
I just want to remind us that the Bible makes us to understand in the book of James chapter 5 verse 16, he said the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. He, he, he said the effectual fervent prayer of the wicked. He said of the righteous, uh, it does great wonders when you tarry in the place of prayer. When you say no to, I say, God, I refuse to be barren. Ah, Father, you have brought me to this now. You have to make a way. You, you make your point clear. Don't, don't complain about what the pastor did not do. Just face God and make your petition known to God. But one thing will stand in the way of that prayer. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8, it said the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination before the God. But the prayer of the upright is, is delight. Your petitions, your requests, your prayer. The Bible says it is the delight of God. Scripture says, if I hold iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If you come to church, and you are, you are bearing grudge with another brother, and you are not on talking time, you are not greeting each other, you are bearing malice, that is iniquity. People, sometimes people of God, when we are talking about iniquity, they are looking at adultery and fornication. They are, they are only looking at stealing. It is iniquity not to forgive somebody who has offended you. It is iniquity to bear grudge with one another. The Bible says, if I hold that in my heart, even if I'm claiming the promise, he said the Lord will not, have, will not hear me. Can we have that scripture in Amplified Version? Psalm 66 verse 18. Amplified, I'm, I'm, I'm running. Quickly. Amplified Version, if you don't have it, I'll move on. <clears throat> One more thing, I want, I'll move on. Leave it, leave it. If I Amplified. Now, I move on to talk one more thing before I, before I step down. I want to talk about some promises of God that if I regard sin and baseness in my heart, that is, if I know it is there and do nothing about it, you know, you know that you are, you are quarreled with Mr. B, and you are, not, you are not happy in your heart with Mr. B, and you know that you bear grudge and you do nothing about it, he says, the Lord will not hear me. I told you in this church, when I refused, even though I saw the children are forgiven them, but randomly with them, I know that I have not completely forgiven them. And the Lord told me, you have come to this prayer ground to, to waste your time. I told you in this church, that if you ask anything from me, I will not answer you. And I said, God, why? He said, because you have not forgiven them. So if you want to receive pr promise of God, you must learn to let go of offense. You must learn to forgive People will offend you. Anybody will not be offended, we have to depart this world. Because people, offense will come. I pray that Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So I talk about this. I want to talk about one aspect of fulfilling promise. There are some promises of God that are made, on, that are conditional. The promise that there shall be no woman barren in the land. That was a generic promise for every woman who is a descendant of Abraham. But there are some, I spoke a lot about this during the crossover, during the meeting we had before the end of this year. That's, there are some blessings we claim in the Bible that are based on certain conditions. They are not just for everybody. That I told you when I'm looking at some blessings in the Bible, I first of all look at the, the, the passage before that. Is there a condition attached to that? If you are careful to diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God this day and be careful to obey, this blessing will follow you. There are some conditions there. There are some if there. If you are not obeying the, the, the word of God, you cannot receive that promise. You got to see what is expected of you. Let me take my story of my life for that today. I, I told you when I, I was praying to go to, to get international scholars to travel abroad. You remember the story very well? And the Lord told me, the reason why I did not answer that prayer was I was not spiritually strong enough to handle that blessing. Do you remember that? And he asked me for one month that I should ask and pray for his power. And for December 1 to the end of 1995, my wife is here. We were only asking for one thing. Lord, give us your power. We prevail. We, we, we travel first. God, your power. Because I know it is error 
To think by repeating requests, it is lack of it is unbelief. That is not what Jesus told us. He said, pray until your joy is full. Pray without ceasing. So you can, you can be, that's not vain repetition. Vain repetition is when you are praying and your mind is not there. You don't even know what you are saying. That is vain repetition. But God, God give me a child. I say it today, in the morning, in the evening. That's not vain repetition. I'm claiming, I'm making petitions to heaven. Am I making sense? So, that December, God give us power every day. And I told you, the Lord, on January 1, he said, because you have received sufficient power, because I don't want you to go there and lose your salvation, your soul is more important to me, you will go this year. And we left that year, God gave us scholarship that year. Now, when I got to Germany, I got to Germany, I was uh, so happy to leave Nigeria because I was so involved and engaged in evangelism. Ibarra, okay, Ibarra, do in Akure area, we are running around. I said, God, it's time for me to rest. Of all this trouble of running up and down, let me just enjoy myself in Europe and rest. And I lost my peace. The Lord was telling me, it is not the time to rest. But I will not listen. <laughs> and when God realized I was becoming too stubborn, she woke my, my wife up in the middle of the night in Nigeria because she was still in Nigeria. What your husband now? Where he is now is not a resting place. In fact, for him and for my children, there is no resting place for my work on earth. They will rest in doing my work when they get to heaven. He better get up and do what I have sent him to Germany to do. I thought I went there to do PhD. God has a different business for me. And so when I finished my, so immediately God, I got a letter, no, no email like this that time, no telephone. It's only night there. So it was a letter that will run its course from Nigeria. I got that. And I said, okay, we are going to start. Three of us in Nigeria, we started talking about God in the language school in Manheim. After the six months, I went to this place where I was going to do my, 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 my PhD. When I got there, the Lord told me, I have work for you in this place. You was doing my work. I came across a Cameroonian sister. There was no single English-speaking church in that, in that city. I called a Cameroonian lady who was happy to see me. I said, I was praying for God to send me a Christian sister that we can at least pray together. Because children of God who are believers, they were falling. No church to go. Nobody, nobody to talk to them. I said, well, you pray for a Christian sister, God send a Christian brother. We can still work together. And that's how we started the church in that city. And the Lord told me, if only you will do my bidding, I will lift you up in this city that those who are born here, we envy you. And they will come to you and say, why is your own different? That's the promise. Is that not a promise? But is that promise without condition? It is if you do my bidding, if you will serve me, if you work for me in this city, I will not just lift you up. Those who are born here, they will come to you to hear your story. And I said, God, I will do your bidding. And, I, and God, we started the church and we are doing the work of God. And God was providing for us miraculously. Those who, who bought my children dresses every winter and summer i never know them somebody will just bring somebody i said let me know the person say no he said we, we don't you don't need to god used white brown everywhere to bless us but we face his work <laughs> a, a particular point in time we said and I, I, we were expecting Emmanuel. i said i needed money god didn't allow me to walk and i said I, I i oh god oh god i will do i'll do your week i will not walk but then I started realizing that I left Nigeria a poor man. I don't want to go back to Nigeria a poor man. At least I should be able to buy a car when I'm coming back. And I, and I said, I want to go and look for work. God said, go look, don't look for a job. Do my work. I will bless you. I said, I won't get a job. He said, I will provide you with a job in this place. I said, God, you know that they won't give good job. He said, if I want to sit down in the office with them, I can do it. They can't stop me. And then one time when I spent money, I needed money. <laughs> because my wife was pregnant. She, she has no work permit. So I, I went to look for a job for two weeks. I took time off. <laughs> the Lord told my wife, he said, your husband has started again. He, 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 has gone to, he has gone his own way now. He's looking for a job. He's looking for money. And I told, my wife told me, I said, okay, let me do what, what this week. I will, call, I will come back. And then I broke my back. And I had to start begging God. God, help me. And then, I, 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 you know what? I get back. I said, God, I'm sorry. You know what happened? And one of my colleagues just called me and said, there is this money they give to pregnant women. Can you also fulfill the form? And we fill the form. 
and they will submit the form. And they call me, <laughs> and they say, give, say, we'll give your wife this amount of money every month. As she's waiting for to have a baby. When she's a baby, she's going to collect that money. And then we, she will collect the money until her passport expired. Ah. I said, Jesus, this is, where am I looking for a job? If you, if you do the will of God, if God make a promise, look at what he's telling you to do. If you are careful to pay attention to what he has to do, the, you, you will receive that promise. But my prayer on that promise, Pastor, please forgive me. My prayer on that promise was not that God fulfilled that promise. My prayer was, God, God, give me the grace to do your work. That is the, pray, that's the petition I need to make. Because the, the promise is automatic if only I would do his will. And then when my, that, to, to shock you, we didn't give this testimony in Germany because they told us, don't give this testimony anywhere. Don't, don't say it anywhere. And then my, pastors, my wife's passport was to be renewed. We renewed, we went back. I said, this money you are giving my wife, it's time to renew. They look at it and say, why did you give you this money? Uh, how come we gave you this money? They went to check my form. They said, we check your form. There is not where you lie there. But how we approve this money for you, we don't know. And they said, please, don't, say, don't tell anybody about this money, oh. Because we'll be in trouble. Jama don't make mistake. If you know them, they are very meticulous. They don't. And you know what? When I was ready, I told you when, when I would want to make presentation, and I said, God, help me. And I get there, and I said, God, I want to speak in German. And I will just speak German language like as if I was speaking Yoruba. And they will say, wow, is that you? They don't know if they have you to repeat. It's not me. It's God. When God wants to showcase his power in your life, nothing can stop you. Let me say you one prayer. I pray God, let me do my program in English. God said no. My, my brother said no. Because God wants to take a greater glory. I will have no this testimony if they allow me to do that program in English language. And so, when it was time, to, to make presentation, I just call on God, and God gave me that, that language to use. So, wrapping up, when I was ready to, de to defend, my supervisor went to boast somewhere. I said, I have a Nigerian student that came to do a research. That research is top class. Before I knew what was happening, the press was carrying all over the place. By the time I was going to defend, I was in the news. The day I defended, everybody was gathered. And the Holy Ghost took control. And, and it, that, that, the following day, I was in the prime news. And I remember God saying, if only. And my, my colleague was saying, what happened? You came here, you met us, you are finishing, and you're, you are on the news. Who did it? Because God promised it. And it was fulfilled. But it was conditioned on me doing his bidding. Do that make sense to us now? If I, if I, there was no need for me to pray God lift me up in this place so that I will be more than all. No. Do my bidding. God give me the grace to do your bidding. Help me. Even the job that they say they don't give. I left working in Germany. There was a law that said when you finish, they cannot give you a job unless you work a, work, have a work permit. The law said you cannot get a work permit unless you have been given a job. That means you, you have to go. You can't work. <laughs> But because my pro, my pro was bragging everywhere, I was in the news. So by the time the foreign office knew that this, this, I would look at the work. There is nothing special there. But when God wants to lift you up, <laughs> rise up on your feet. You, you know, when God wants to lift you up, nothing can pull you down. That law, the, the, the foreign office told the university, give him a temporary letter of appointment. We will give him work permit. It will take the work permit to go and get the permanent work permit. <laughs> What God cannot do, it does not exist. I, I left work there. I was working. He told me I'll make you to sit in the same office with them. And I was doing that. Rest up, begin to talk to God. Father, the grace to do my own bidding of the 